Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about August 20th, uh, League of Legends DFS slate. Um, we have a two game slate, um, two playoff games. As you guys know, these are best of five series now. Um, and, you know, both, you know, all of these teams are really good. I mean, that's why they're in the playoffs. And as mentioned before in my previous video, it's more imperative than ever. Um, when it comes to the playoffs time, given the nature of the playoff uh, best of five series, uh, that a better team tends to win uh, the series. Um, and that, you know, kind of um, is connected to, you know, kind of analyzing the team metrics and the stats over the course of the season or in, in the last two mat, uh, patches in the last couple months. Kind of that's kind of how I how I approach it. Um kind of look at the stats and metrics and see which team you think has been better or has been in better form. Um, unfortunately, that didn't really work out given that KT was in better form than Dawan Kia. Um, it went all the way to, you know, five games, but, um, but yeah, we did predict EDG handed, you know, handle uh, FPX pretty handedly. Um, so I'm happy that EDG won. Um, I'm a huge EDG uh, um Supporter, um, in terms of DFS, I I, I think I, I believe in EDG to do really well. Um, but if they want to make it back to the Worlds this year, you know, they were the champions in the Worlds tournament last year. Um, I do think they've been playing better, but I'll kind of talk about why I, I think EDG um, will probably lose um, tonight. So... Again, it's a two-game slate. Uh, first game in China, EDG versus RNG. Um, and then LCK in Korea, it's G versus Lift Sandbox. Um, both very, very interesting and elite teams uh, going, at, get, going at it against each other. Um, EDG versus RNG, let's talk about this one first. Um, this, is probably, <laughs> this is probably the most important thing to talk about today. Um, it's JJ starting at jungle again. Um, as you guys know, EDG has been playing much better with Junja at jungle. Um, I think Junja has been a more aggressive uh, jungler this patch or in this meta currently, and uh, EDG just has looked better. I mean, I think he Junja has opened up a lot of things for Viper and Mako do their own thing in the bottom lane. Um, but now, for some reason, EDG is starting JJ. I understand, like, JJ obviously, you know, has the experience and has the, you know, credentials from winning with EDG the Worlds last year um, over RNG. Um, so I do get that. I mean, he's more experienced and he, you know, knows what it takes to win. But I just do not believe in the current form that he's in. And I just think his play style is um, well suited for the current meta. Um, I think Junja is a better fit, even though Junja has shown some vulnerabilities in the last series against FPX. Um, Viper was a monster, and there was a reason for that, with Junja um, constantly putting map pressure on the map um, over FPX's jungler Clid. So we'll see what happens there. But, but for DFS purposes, I think this is very fascinating because let's say like EDG wins the first game, right? So I think they're going to stick with JJ. Um, but let's say if EDG loses game one, I think they go back to Ginger right away. I think that's probably what it's gonna what's gonna happen in my opinion, um, just given the success that EDG has had with Junja. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's maybe a position that I would fade um, if you are only playing like one or two lineups um, for GPP. Um, I think for cash, you kind of have to go with RNG. RNG has been in good form as well. Um, RNG has, uh, Shahu, especially in the mid lane, has been <laughs> really, really good in the past couple months, at least. Um, and, you know, Gala is Gala. I mean, he he's he's the person of, he's the player that always racks up penta, penta kills every other week. Um, so I think they're really good. But I, I wouldn't roll out EDG. I think EDG has is coming back to the form um, where they were last season toward this, uh, like around this time, um, kind of doing the Worlds uh, in the Worlds qualifiers and kind of getting ready for the Worlds. EDG was in great form. 
Um, I can I saw some glimpses of EDG um, in the last series and the the week before that, um, where EDG has shown me that kind of a success and the form that they used to be in. So, and that you know goes a lot. Uh, goes along i feel like edg goes as viper goes um i think viper actually has been the most consistent player for edg um it's just that their jungler has not been great junja and jj you know have not played as well as they should have along with like let's say flandre and scout as well i think the bottom lane was good it's been really good overall overall um for edg so i do think they'll match well against gala and ming I think, I mean, I think it's more of a coin flip. I mean, people are going to say, oh, JJ is starting for EDG, so RNG should win. But, I mean, yeah, I get it because JJ has been an inferior jungler than Junja, but I think EDG's form has come back up a lot. Um, just after watching FPX, <clears throat> I think it's been confirmed. So, I think it's a toss-up. Um, I'm going to have to say RNG wins 3-2. to two. But like I said, I think EDG definitely has a shot. Um, I think after if they lose game one, I think Jinja comes in and I think they'll look much better. So we'll see what happens. But <clears throat> this is definitely going to be, uh, you know, game that, you know, I think it's a more of a coin coin flip. So but I do want to see some stats in the last couple patches. It's kind of what I do um, when I'm bored. No, <laughs> when I'm playing DFS. Uh, so this includes all of the summer split, but I want to see the last couple matches. The CKPM is really high, um, so I do think this is gonna be a very bloody matchup. Goal spend percentage, EDG is up a lot. I mean, so you see here, like EDG's stats are like all through the roof. I mean, and it's not; it's a sizable sample. It's a thirteen game sample, and they've looked really really good but like i said the caveat is junja is not starting i think these 13 games were played with junja maybe one game there with jj when they subbed out junja after game one just trying to experiment but you see like edg is no joke um i, I like edg uh um i like edg's chances to upset more than like 30 40 percent actually not quite enough for me to predict them to what win outright i think it's gonna go to game five games all the way um i like rng still to win i think three to two but i think it's a game to target for sure for dfs purposes and the korean matchup in the lck is gen g versus lip sandbox this is a tough one to call. Um, I know Genji actually had a choice between Sandbox and Damwon Kia to play against in this round. Um, and Genji actually chose Sandbox for actually a reason that you probably didn't even uh, think about right away. Like you would think like, oh, Sandbox likes to fight and Damwon Kia is not in good form, but they have experience. Just not that because uh, Genji's coach actually came out and said, that um, for playoff and world qualifying seeding reasons that they wanted to pay, play Sandbox because I think there's a chance if Genji loses here, then Damwon Kia could play against them in the world's qualifiers, blah, blah, blah. So I think that's kind of where the, the mind was at because really qualifying for the worlds and doing well at the worlds is the most important thing for these teams, at least these elite teams. Um, whereas Sandbox, I mean, I think they def they've definitely exceeded their expectations for the season. Now they're in the semifinals of the summer split. Um, they love to fight, and that's how they have come here, uh, all advanced all the way to the semifinals of the summer split. I do think they match what match well against Gen G, who also likes to fight, um, and who. Uh, has been great, um, but I still think Genji should win here. Um, over the course of a five-game series, I think um, Sandbox, even though they've looked great, um, I think they go as Prince goes. You saw Prince's game on Zeri, I think it was, that it was unstoppable. But with Ruler and Lehens and Peanut, uh, I'm just going to have to go with Genji's experience. 
and their skills of those players. Um, I'm going to have to look at here some of the metrics. Um, as you see here, like, yeah, I mean, Sandbox plays fast, but still not as fast as EDG or RNG that we saw for the last two patches. You saw it for the same time frame. A similar time frames depending on when they started using 12.14 and 13 um but so i do think i mean this has the potential to get bloody but genji has also shown that they're experienced they know what it takes to win they can also maybe focus on the macro game so that's kind of where i'm getting at where genji has a lot more winning winning paths like way, more ways to win uh, in favor of Gen G compared to Live Sandbox, I think Sandbox's win condition is tied to Croco playing okay, Dove not feeding, and do well in team fights, protecting Prince, and Closer playing an Assassin Champion. Like that really is like a one or two ways, I guess two different combinations that Sand Sandbox could win through. Um, and that's been a successful recipe because LCK teams don't really know how to like initiate team fights and be as aggressive as Sandbox has been. Um, whereas Gen G, I think, has a lot more ways to win macro game, uh, through the jungle, uh, securing objectives, through the bottom lane where Ruler and Lahens have um, uh, snowballed from there. And then Doran has played an assassin champion, whereas Dove is, does not. Um, so I, I, I can definitely see Chovy going off of, uh, you know, a, a, a matchup against Closer. So I just feel like Genji has a lot more ways to win, um, different ways to win compared to Sandbox. So let's look at the metrics just like we did for the LPL um, between Genji and Sandbox. Here you see the goal spend percentage. Genji has a seven, about seven percent advantage. Early game, Genji's better. Mid to late game, Sandbox is better. I can definitely see that because Sandbox is a better team fighting team than Genji is slightly. Um, I think it depends. And the goal difference, huge, huge advantage to Genji. Um, and then I look at the lane percentage and jungle percentage, and I mean you see. Peanut has been lights out the last couple of patches over Sandbox here. I think Croco is decent, but not at the quite level, not quite at the level as Peanut. So yeah, I mean, I think Genji is going to win. Um, I do think Sandbox is playable for GPP uh, in case Sandbox goes off and wins the first game and snowballs, I think, that throughout the series. But like I said, they're going to have to win all three games in the series by winning team fights. And that's really hard to do, especially going up against an experienced team like Genji. Um, I just feel like Genji should win this. And I'm not, uh, yeah, I mean, just, just like the odds indicate, I'll have the minimal exposure to sand, Sandbox. But from the ownership standpoint, yeah, I mean, that also, uh, I think, I, yeah, I mean, Sandbox definitely has a shot. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't mind playing them in a, like a 12 max, 20 max GBP if you're into that. So, um, but yeah, so that's all I got for you guys today. Um, I like Viper a lot, so that's my personal bias probably coming in, but Viper has been the best AD carry in the world the last couple weeks, in my opinion. Ruler has been really good as well, but I think he, his performance has been more of the, um, um, byproduct of his teammates and his team playing well i think rulers kda go up a lot after 20 minutes <laughs> because he gets a lot of penta kills and quadra kills just based on the setup that his teammates help out with but edgs like viper yeah i mean they support him a lot as well but viper has consistently made great plays as an ad carry um who can carry basically on his own with Mako at support. So yeah, I mean, I, I like EDG. Um, I'll probably have like 60% RNG, 40% EDG probably. I think it's more of a toss up than people think. Like I said, I think Jin JJ could go out for Jinja if they lose game one. Um, but RNG is no joke as well. Like I said, they've been playing really well. I think this is a fantastic matchup to watch if you are kind of new um, at watching League of Legends. I mean, this is the type of a matchup that you want to watch to see how great these players are and their skill levels are. So, 
Otherwise, um, like I said, this uh this this video is sponsored by True DFS. Go check out their channel on Twitter and on YouTube. Um, they have videos and contents about other sports as well, more traditional, like you know, uh football, soccer, baseball. And then yeah, if you want to come check out my Patreon as well, where I share my core plays and uh, match predictions, exactly exact match predictions, but also prize picks, uh, prop bets. Otherwise, yeah, hope to see you guys at the top of the leaderboard. I'll make more of these videos uh, for the weekend. Otherwise, yeah, have fun. Have a good one. Bye-bye.